So I got into the uh, droning, I bought that, uh, the Mavic Pro 2 drone, and I decided I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna get some aerial footage. And in doing so, I shared some of the footage with a friend of mine who coincidentally told me I, he came across on the Queen Mary. And I thought that was kind of amazing. You don't know too many people who've actually been on the Queen Mary when it was being used as a passenger ship. So I'm gonna take this opportunity today to introduce you to my friend Terry and have him talk to you about the Queen Mary. Terry. Thank you, William. Very nice to be here. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Terry. Indeed, yes, I did come across on the Queen Mary in wow. 1965. Uh, I mean, well, I was only 11, so I'm mean, just a few years older. Yeah, just but, a little you bit. Know, we came over with the family, and my dad was a foreign correspondent for a British newspaper. And in the mid-60s, everything was happening in America. So there was, you know, there was, uh, after, after John Kennedy was killed in 1963, all these other things started happening in America. And, and my dad's newspaper, the Daily Telegraph, said, we need Henry Miller in New York. So they, they basically gave us 10 days to pack up, ship up, and get onto the Queen Mary and bugger off to New York. And that's exactly what happened. So we, we got on the Queen Mary and five days later we were in New York. So I gotta ask, what was it like to come across on a ship like that? It was incredible. You just, you just felt like royalty because everybody's your, you know, they have purses uh, for everybody. There were, like I said, there were three classes. There was, Tourist, cla tourist class, cabin class, and first class. We came on cabin class. Cabin class, as far as I was concerned, was first class. I mean, unlimited food. The, the, the food was just so good, so incredibly good. And whatever you wanted, if you didn't like that, they'd get you something else. You could have it in your cabin, or you could have it at any one of these fantastic ornate restaurants with beautiful walnut wood. I mean, the, the, the design of the ship was, it was built in the 30s. So you imagine the 30s decor. It's a, walnut was one of the main woods, just just beautiful. I Very understand they have great. over 40 or 50 types of woods. They do. On the ship. Huge, I, don't, I couldn't tell you which ones they are, but I know that walnut was one of them, and uh, rosewood, a lot of rosewood. But that's, that was one of the big appeals to the ship. It was just the decor. The decor was just beautiful. Just absolutely gorgeous. Right. And then they had classes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only did they have classes, they had classes. They had uh, dances. They had, <laughs> they had what they call a, a, a mistress of... Uh, what was it? A mistress of... It wasn't that kind of mistress. <laughs> it was a mistress of... Like she was in charge of keeping everybody happy. It was the, it was the, she was in charge of the entertainment. For the show. Okay, well, speaking of that, I did a recent tour of the uh, Queen Mary, mm -hmm. and the uh, tour guide did an awesome job explaining some of the history. And he mentioned a lot of famous people who come across, oh, including Bob Hope, and, and and the Queen herself was on the ship Queen at one point. On. Um, Churchill, of course. Was Churchill, on. absolutely. It was also used during the wars. The uh, Gray, it was called the Gray. Gray Ghost. Gray Ghost, yeah. And they it was repainted, painted gray, yeah. It was painted gray, and it took the troops over to uh, France. Right. Oh, it was just incredible. I think it's an absolute so, miracle that the ship during that era, during the war, was able to get through the entire war unscathed, transporting thousands and thousands and thousands it, it of is, It is amazing to think about it. And the number of miles, how many miles it ever did, I don't know. But during the last voyage, when we came in 65, so in 67, when uh, Long Beach boarded, I think Long Beach boarded in 66, but it was finally agreed and they came over in 67. They, it had to go through a very long process. <laughs> My dad was aboard that last voyage. Which okay, is, so he came across around the Cape then. Yes. Because it wouldn't fit through the Panama Canal if I believe yeah, correctly. Exactly. Wow, you do have yes. you have done your research, haven't you, sir? Yes I have. <laughs> so you know it it's true. And so he was he was aboard uh, covering it for the Daily Telegraph, the very last voyage of the Queen Mary coming to Long Beach. Right. And one of the best parts about this story was that he said, Son, he goes, you know, there was a lot of pilfering on that journey. People were 
collecting memorabilia, shall we say. Mm. So most of the journalists who were aboard and the passengers were like, he was stealing things from the Queen Mary. Like, wow. there's the, if you go into any cabin, you'll see salt water tap and you'll see a plain water tap. Right. And so you could have either plain regular water or salt water to wash. The theory was salt water was good for the skin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> so people were stealing, literally stealing those bloody, what, what do you call them? Spigots. They were stealing spigots. Wow. Anything from the Queen Mary that's stealing. Wow. Well, it's amazing uh, when I did the tour how well it's been restored on the inside. I know the outside. Outside doesn't look so good. Yeah, it needs yeah. a little paint job. But on yeah. the inside, it's quite amazing. And, and I encourage anybody to take a tour of the Queen Mary. I think it's yeah. a uh, it's a great opportunity to get some history of, of the Queen Mary. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I, I plan on going back. I take more of the tours. Maybe I didn't get a chance to, to eat on the Queen Mary. I would like to do that, and maybe stay in a, one of the hotel rooms and really get the full experience of mm -hmm. what the Queen Mary had to offer back then. Um, again, Staying it, in one of the cabins is definitely the way to go. It's an amazing experience. And I also, from the tour, I remember them talking about how they took, they offloaded much of the equipment off the Queen Mary, some of the decor, and left it in places like um, Australia. Yep. And there was a kind of a reason for that, is if the Australian government agreed to that because they knew they could be able to get their troops transported back to their country after the war. Right. So it was quite interesting, quite fascinating. Listen. You know, from, from its inception, when it, I think it was it was built in Scotland, right? And um, from 1936, I believe. You think about it. That's all those years, the history from 1936 to 1967, what that ship has accomplished. Absolutely, and, yeah. and after it finished its service in the military, transporting troops, it was we're fortunate that they put it back into service as a passenger. Um, right vessel for approximately 20 years. 20 years, yeah. If not, how have you gotten here? <laughs> I might not be here sitting here talking to you, Bill. Exactly. What a no. fortunate thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say unfortunate? Oh, no. <laughs> totally fortunate. But, uh, no, but it's true. I mean, and the, the beauty of, of traveling by ship in those days was it was leisurely. You didn't, you know, with, with, with modern day transportation, you know, the jet, you get jet lag. In, in, Queen Mary or any other ship, you, they deduct an hour for every day. Sure. So you do not feel any time difference whatsoever. Right. You just feel seasick. Well, what's amazing <laughs> is that the Queen Mary, when it first launched, there really was no transportation via air. And it, not in, in the thirties. No. no. And no. then it was the fastest way across. Matter of fact, they had competitions. It was actually the fastest ship. It had right. A, it had a twin turbine. It wasn't a. How many days did it take you to get across? Five days. Five wow. days. Amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it really is when you consider it's you know, several thousand miles and, and, and very, very rough waters. And it was doing a uh, fine job until the modern airplane kind of <laughs> <up with it. laughs> okay. Yeah, until, you know, what's his name, the Spruce Goose came into existence. And right. Howard Hughes and TWA, they just kind of ruined it. Right, and I think one of the reasons it was brought back into service too, right? They partnered up with the company that um, owned the Titanic. It was the White Star Line. There you Correct. go. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And uh, kind of salvaged it from going <laughs> under. That was an amazing history itself, the yeah. White Star Line, and then of course the Titanic. Absolutely. But when we were coming across in that May of 1965, I was convinced we were going down like the Titanic. It was. It was that bad. Did you? Uh, I never did you, you didn't get sick? No. Any of you your family my get sick? Oh, my mother was seasick the entire journey. Oh, jeez. And she had just given birth to my sister Mandy. She felt so ill, and Mandy's crying all the time. She felt sick, and Mandy felt sick. Everybody else felt sick. The nurses felt sick. The captain felt sick. Wow. Well, and that's the reason also that they probably didn't carpet the floors. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because people Good got point. sick. They got really oh, yeah. sick. No, no, no. It was bad. It was really bad. Well, so. and then that's why the third class was put on the ends of the boat. Right. Yeah. Because they had the worst ride. They did. And then, of course, there was steerage. Yeah. Well, I also heard that um, the two things. The they didn't really account for side to side rocking, so they didn't have the first time when the ship was first launched and the first few voyages. They didn't have rails. No. And they oh, weren't no. till later they had rails. Yeah, because people were falling off the ship. Exactly. People were getting injured. They were hauling them off because they broke bones, they bruises, banged up, whatever. It was kind of amazing. 
that they didn't think about that. I they didn't think about a lot of things, and it's you know it's like anything. It's uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Exactly. Right? So, uh, oh, you're a, uh, oh, and then the other thing I was going to tell you is, and then maybe you talked about how you ran, had the run of the ship, but yeah. I understand that they were really the people working on the ship were really good at catching people who were going from one class to another. Oh yes, they were and very strict. You never got caught. Huh? No, because. Because it was so, so it was such a rough crossing, and you know we got a we got a nine year old boy and an eleven year old boy, and you know we were well, you know we had your ties on. We had a suit and ties on. Picture, you know, yeah, yeah. Mother and father and said my father especially insisted on wearing a tie all the time. So we were not a threat at all. We yeah. weren't like some of these young ruffians. Nice. Yeah. So we we just walked around like we just owned this place, and we fell into one day we fell into the. Or we found rather the the first the first class swimming pool. We really wanted to get into this place because we knew there was a ghost. We knew we'd heard there was a ghost. <laughs> and it, to this day, if you go on any one of those Queen Mary tours, you will see the ghost, or let's say hear the ghost. Construction of the Queen Mary began in the 1930s and was delayed due to the Great Depression. Her maiden voyage took place in 1936, and her last crossing of the Atlantic Ocean took place in 1967. During those years, there's so much history wrapped around the Queen Mary. That history includes everything from military service to how fast she was able to cross the Atlantic Ocean. She set the record for 14 years. No other ship was able to get across the Atlantic faster than she was. It took the Queen Mary about a little over five days to cross the Atlantic Ocean, from England to New York City. Shortly after World War II broke out, the Queen Mary was called into service as a transport vessel for the military. During her service, she was painted camouflage gray to help avoid detection by the enemy. Part of her success was her speed. She could travel about 30 knots, and she used a zigzag pattern to avoid submarines and torpedoes. Currently, the Queen Mary is open to the public as a hotel and has restaurants, nightlife tours, and special events.